What is up? Um. <laughs> I don't really know how to talk about the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo because I've never been this conflicted with a book. Normally, I can't even say normally I would DNF because I think that we all know based on the number of sort of rantish, upset, disappointed reviews I have on my channel that, um, that would be a lie. I, and like, part of me used to be the person in the comment section that was like, if I'm not feeling it, I just stop reading it. But the thing is, like, that's only a half truth. Like, I'll stop reading it, but I always go back. I always go back because I'm... At my heart, I am still very much a completionist, and so I'm very torn with The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Um, I don't know if, I, I think I'm just gonna upload this today. I guess it, it's kind of a reading vlog. It's more like a reading update, right? So if you haven't followed my Twitter thread, I'll leave it linked in the description, but Long story short, I decided that I was gonna take a break from chronicling my Shadow Hunters journey. I still have to edit my Clockwork Angel vlog. I'm hoping to get that out before I disappear for the summer, but um, that's all that happened on that one. So after I finished that, I tweeted out that I was gonna start um, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid because it was Pride Month and I have like five books that I own that were pride themed um, they featured queer characters it felt appropriate so I was going to start with that one because I received it um, way back in February from my bookish cupid uh, as part of the Valentine's uh, bookish cupid um, exchange that was coordinated by chapter Kate and the other hosts I don't know what their names were, so I'm sorry if you had any part in that, but I know that Chapter K was the person who was like the brainchild, and shout out to them. <clears throat> I didn't really do anything else for Valentine's other than send out my bookish Cupid, which, on a side note, I have been itching to send out like bookish mail, but the idea of like going on someone's wish list and like just randomly purchasing it terrifies me a little, but that's a totally different video. So, um, of course, this is gonna be a red light. Um, so I, I wanted to read it because I had it in my possession for a while, and I just wanted, I wanted to get to it for, oh, it's gonna be so hot in this car. Um, I just wanted to get to it for pride because I knew that it featured a sapphic relationship. Um, sapphic relationships aren't something I have a lot of, um, books for is not something I read uh, a lot of, so I wanted, I wanted to read it, you know? I wanted to see what the buzz of, was about, so I picked it up, and almost immediately, I, what are you doing? There's like, what are you doing? Anyway, almost immediately, I had issues with the text. I knew that Evelyn Hugo was a Latinx character, she's of Cuban descent, um, I didn't know she was Cuban, I knew she was Latinx. I found out over the course of reading that she was Cuban. I really wish this truck would get over because this is a one lane highway and they're going really slow. I knew she was a Latinx character, so I was fine with that, whatever, I was expecting that. Um, I was not expecting Monique Grant, who was apparently the narrator of this book, to be a biracial black woman. So that made me raise my eyebrows just a little bit because Taylor Jenkins Reid, from what I could find, was white. Um, so after I, I read those 40 pages, I was a little uncomfortable because I was like, I don't know if I want to read about a white woman trying to write this black woman. So I googled it just to see if there was anybody out there who had like a similar concern that I did. Um, I came across this interview that they did, and I'll leave it linked in the de in the description. I don't know how legit it is, but in this little piece that I read, Taylor Jenkins Reid basically talks about how they're a successful author, and um, they have a mainstream platform. Now, 
if we really want to dissect words, we can talk about what it means to have a mainstream platform. We can. I'm not going to, but we can. Um, and so she thought that if she could expose an audience that wouldn't typically reach for a book that featured marginalized identities and lift that, like, that kind of storytelling up, that that would be doing her part as an ally. And in the moment, I was like, you know what, the way you worded this, um, it really, it won me over. It made me feel like, okay, um, maybe, maybe this white girl does have the range. Like, maybe she has it. Like, so many people love this book that whatever issues that I have at this moment on page 44, like, they can't, like, it has to be me looking for something, right? Like, it has to be my petty bitch instincts looking to latch on to something to be upset about, right? Like, and I fully admit that. I fully admit that I am a petty bitch. I fully admit that I reach. I fully admit that sometimes stuff is not as serious in a book. And it just, it, it's like that piece of popcorn that's stuck in your tooth. Like, it's not that deep, but it's all you're going to think about for the three hours you're trying to get it out. So, I was like, it has to just be me. I'll get over it. I'll move on with my life. I'm not going to die because of whatever this representation is on page 40. Then I keep reading, and then I was annoyed because I didn't, I've never heard anybody talk about how um, this book hints at incestuous child sexual assault, that it hints at full out, not even hint, there's like full on child sexual assault in this book um, that Evelyn recounts to Monique, that um, there is abuse, there is some fucked up shit, but I don't even think that I got any of that. Now, to be fair, I have not read a single Goodreads review. I haven't really watched an in-depth review of, um, is, oh my, I haven't even watched an in-depth review of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, but I feel like even when I shout out a book that I know is fucked up, like, if I talk about Gone with the Wind, I tell you that it's racist propaganda trash. Like, it is. I, if I'm reading, if I'm talking about something and I mention a little life, I'm gonna talk about how it's fucking torture porn. Like, I don't think I should have to watch a full-on review to have someone mention Taylor Jenkins reads The Seven Husbands and for someone to be like, yeah, there's, like, child sexual assault in that book. Oh, yeah, there's, like, abuse in that book. Oh, yeah, there's, like, there's hints at incestuous assault in that book. Like, and all of that, right? All of that is devoid of any conversation about how Evelyn Hugo being preyed upon by the corner store, by the little bodega guy at 14 years old had anything to do with her Cuban identity. Like, the fact that this little corner store bodega guy was gonna try and feel up Sally Susan? No, bitch. No. He was doing it because she wasn't white. I mean, to be fair, I mean, if you're a pedophile, you're a pedophile. Like, I don't really care why you're doing it. But I think that if you're going to have a Latinx character, then I think you have to discuss about how their Latinxness impacts them in this area. I don't know. Maybe that was just me. Maybe that was just me. But I kept reading, right? So I'm reading along. I'm reading along. Monique's chapters, where we don't have any kind of her dialogue with Evelyn, are the most boring, the worst. Like, I'm sorry. They just are. Nothing about Monique is interesting, which I think is really sad because I think if you put all this work into make Evelyn this really dynamic character and you couldn't be bothered to make your black character, who you purposefully made black, right? Like this was a conscious decision. You were out here trying to do the Lord's work or some shit. You purposefully made this person black and they are the blandest person in the book. But then we get to the piece de resistance. And these things happened in quick succession. We get to the part where Monique Grant talks about how she is not black. She is biracial. And when I tell you my head fucking exploded, it exploded. So when Monique was talking about how she had to explain to people that she might look black, but she wasn't black. That was the most internalized anti-blackness that she can ever imagine. And I can tell you that if this was a black author, 
moments like that I probably would have fucked with. Like, if Angie Thomas wanted to sit here and write about a... <laughs> I don't think... I don't think Angie Thomas is biracial. But if she wants to write a biracial story, bitch, I will let her. So if Andy Thomas, Tommy Adeyemi, who's out here being like hashtag Nigerian pride or whatever, wanted to write a biracial story and be like, I'm not, I'm not black, I'm biracial, I would be like side eye in it, but I'd be like, at least you're black, you know? Like, but her, like, Taylor Jenkins Reid is white. She doesn't get to talk about like that. It just, it, it felt really, it just felt really disgusting. If I'm being honest, like it, ha I've never been as uncomfortable reading a book as reading that made me like there was just this like like I can't even talk about it like there was just a wave of emotion that washed over me where I was like I didn't just read that okay I obviously read that wrong like there there has to be I'm missing something like I, I skipped a sentence like when I tell you that that made me so upset, it just, it like literally crushed my entire soul. Reading this white author feel like they could write a narrative where the black person was like, I'm not black. Like, that was just, I felt, a toe across the line. So I was already, like, in my feels about that, right? And then, like, literally not even ten pages later, maybe it was ten pages, it wasn't very long after that, we're, we're out of Monique's perspective, we're back to the interview, we're back to Evelyn recounting uh, something that happened in, like, the 50s. And Evelyn is talking to Celia St. James, and Celia St. James, I think they're at like the, like they're getting ice cream, they're getting milkshakes or something, something like that. Um, they're just out having a good time. And Celia says that she likes Evelyn, you know, she likes all of these qualities Evelyn has, she lists these qualities, I was like, that's cool, whatever. I fuck with Celia. And then Celia says, I like that your skin is too dark for your blonde hair. And again, it was this moment of, are we just not, like, this is, this is what we're doing? Like, of all the things that we could do, this is, this is it? Like, this is, this is, this is how we're spending our time. Like, this is, this is really, this is... And again, I feel like if a Latinx author was writing this, any dark-skinned person, honestly, you don't have to be Latinx or black to be dark-skinned in a minority. Like, dark skin comes in all ethnicities, homie. But there was just something about how that was written, right? That it just, again, made me so uncomfortable. And I didn't understand why, why Taylor Jenkins Reid felt that it was necessary to include it. And I say this because nowhere else in the narrative are we talking about how um, being a Latinx person has impacted Evelyn's life or being a black woman has impacted um, impacted fucking Monique. Everything, every time we have Monique talking about being black, it's always like some bullshit. Honestly. It's honestly like bullshit. Like it's, it's all very um, biracial person learns they're black 101. Like, biracial person learns that the world is always going to view them as black 101. And they're trying to distance themselves from that. And to me, that is the most frustrating thing about this book so far. And honestly, the book isn't that great, you guys. It's really not. Like, Evelyn Hugo is a really interesting character, and her voice is really distinct, and I think that she is just that person. Like, she is that bitch. But, like I said, Evelyn Hugo is the archetype of every female character that I fuck with. And it's not like I don't have a bunch of female characters that I fuck with. Like, I don't think there's anything revolutionary about Evelyn Hugo, except maybe she's Latinx and she's sapphic and she's finally open about 
being bisexual. Like, I don't think we get a lot of coming out stories about a person who was like, what, in their 70s or 90s? Like, in that regard, Evelyn Hugo is a revolutionary tale, right? I think that it's, it is what it is. But I don't think that beyond that, this book does anything special. So, it's just, it's really, really, I've never had a book make me feel this way and I honestly just am not here for it. I don't think that I haven't, I, I, I don't know. I really just, I don't get it. I don't, sometimes I can read a book and I can understand intellectually that it's not for me. I can respect the fact that another reader is going to appreciate it far more than I ever could. But in this instance, in this situation, I don't understand how a close reading of the text, not just the fact that Evelyn Hugo is a badass, um, can render anybody enjoying it. Like, I just don't. So, I'm not trying to attack anybody, but I would really love to understand the other perspective. Because, I have, like I said, I haven't watched a review. I've only seen it mentioned in, like, best of lists and... I loved this book in 2018, and, um, you should read this, because it's on my, like, I just, I want to understand. I just really want to understand. Um, I know that there are minorities that like this book, so I would really, really love to hear from them. Um, white people liking some weird bullshit don't, doesn't surprise me, okay? Like, white people be always on some weird shit. Okay, like, white people gave us Fifty Shades of Grey, y'all can't be trusted, y'all are permanently disinvited from the cookout, but it's okay, sometimes we love you. But I would really love to hear from minorities um, who read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and what they liked about it, and if they had similar issues that I had, or am I really just out here breaking limbs, stretching, because I really, like, I'm just so, so, so confused. But I'm going to go now because I've been rambling for damn near 20 minutes. And it's hot as fuck in this car and I want to roll down the window. So thanks for watching. This has been a hot mess. But what else were you expecting? Hopefully I'll see you again soon in another video. But until then, 